Hi there. <laughs> Most of you know me. I'm Emily Rogers, and I'm the director here. And I am so pleased and happy to have Weldon doing our first Sunday with the Artist in the new year. Uh, the Sunday with the Artist program is basically funded through Volusia County and through their mini grant program. And uh, it's now being even funded for more than uh, than just Weldon's. Uh, but we're really pleased to have him. He's an award-winning painter, and I'm sure if you have been to many of our openings or come to the gallery here, you've seen his work, which is amazing. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to him and let him tell you something about himself. My name is Weldon Ryan. I'm a uh, I'm an artist. I'm the carnival painter, as most people know me. I paint my subject matter, carnival, my my culture, which is from, I'm from Trinidad, so uh, Trinidad and Tobago. So the whole West Indian culture is, is what I'm trying to put uh, forth so that everyone uh, know who I am and what I do and about the culture. My beautiful wife, Rich Lynn, she, you know, she's, she pushes me and she tells me how, how to get things rolling and, and she does a whole lot of intricate things for me, so I thank her. Um, what I, I, I paint realistically, as most of you know, um, at least I try to, that's, that's the genre that I choose. Now, of course, there's different facets of, of realism, um, but I like to think that if you paint figuratively, um, you are a realist painter and the whole thing is what scale I, I try to I tend to go for a, a, a more larger scale of, of realism than than just you know uh, a lighter version so that's what I do and, and basically my technique has been learned over the course of time uh, I, I use the uh, um, the Frank Riley method mixed with a Max Ginsburg method, which is more a la, a la prima, basically dabbing colors to make things happen, uh, the cool your colors to, to uh, change your values and so forth. So that's basically how I approach things. Now, I painted stages, you know, the first stage is the drawing stage. Generally, uh, what I do is I do the opaque projection because if I was to draw intric intricately uh, the way that I want to, I'll be there for weeks, and I, it'll keep me away from what I want to do. I want to lay down the colors. <laughs> so, so here's a couple of uh, samples of how my tracings uh, uh, come to. All right, and we say tracing; it's actually a little bit more intricate than that because I put a lot of detail in in the the, the drawings that that I I do off of the opaque projector. There's certain intricate areas, curves, and and transitions that I, I put into my tracings uh, to make me understand as I paint, if in case uh, I don't remember the information that I saw, it helps me to retrieve it. It's another piece that I'm working on. And, and it's, of course, it's very preliminary, but it's very detailed the way that I, I have it traced out. The funny thing is it's, it's detailed for me, but as I start to paint, I'm going to start losing some of these details. So I have to rely on my ability to, to, to paint. Now before the opaque, uh, well, I, I, use, I use this setup to help me paint. Because with this setup, with my, my laptop and uh, this situation, Photoshop, I can, I can move things around. Uh, I can, I can uh, enlarge items, areas I want to paint, which makes it very easy, if you see. It makes it very easy. Uh, for me to start manipulate. The only trick is with this, the colors being that it's from a, R, it's from a, a RGB color scheme, uh, you know, the monitor, uh, computer colors, it's, it fluctuates and that's always a problem. So it does trick your eye. So I gotta be careful with that. Generally what I used to do was I used to paint from prints and all of the, the colors are there, but for some reason the depth of the image was not there. So, you know, you take a look at these items that I have. <laughs> oh, come on. It's carnival, man. It's carnival. Like, no. <laughs> yeah, you know. So these are images. This one, actually, I, I cut it in half and I flipped 
the image, so it made one. But I, I have yet to get to these. I'm probably not going to get to them because as things go on, <laughs> images come through and we go to all these carnivals we go to. Images like replaces other images, so I scrap this and move on to something else. <laughs> um, all right, using the, the, uh, the Munzel color theory, it's about value, learning the value scale. And all of the colors as you go along have, has a value to them. Um, say, for instance, well, you, you, basically the lightest light and the darkest dark. Um, so that's a whole value thing. Generally, I, uh, I skip a whole lot of that because I went to the Art Students League in, in, in New York and I did all the studies and just, and I read books and did all the research and I found that dang, it's too much information to try to do. So to simplify life, I just decided, you know, the way I do my color pencils, uh, incidentally, I was a forensic artist for the NYPD and basically I, all I did was draw with pencils, gray, grayscale. So I, I just said simply, let me just work on five values, the, the middle tone, uh, the a dark, and a light. Everything else as you paint will mesh into itself as you blend, all right? And of course, the darkest darks and the lightest lights, and of course, the highlights. So that's that's how I approach what I do. Um, the structure in which I paint, you know, like I said, I paint in stages. The first stage is very rough, and I'm all over the place. Especially being that I work large, uh, I try to relate all of the parts together. But sometimes I might be on something, and something comes to my mind. I guess the ADHD situation, and I jump to something something other than what I was working on. I'll get back to it, but bottom line, the first stage though, I work on the whole object and try to bring it to, to one understanding for me. Then the second stage, I get into um, finer details, uh, trying to get the parts uh, correct, all right? And it's, it's funny, that's, that's how I work with the, with the forensic art as well. And then the third stage is uh, the, uh, the finer stage, and I work on getting all the fine details going. And of course, the fourth stage, if I ever get to it, <laughs> if I ever get to it, um, is like really getting the finish. Now, that's ultra realism, and I seem to never really get there because there's always shows that I, I want to try to get into, uh, galleries I want to submit to. So I have to tailor what I do because the bottom line is, um, I want to make money at this, like all of us. <laughs> we, want, we want some success. So the best way to do that is to get your samples out to the galleries and see, you know, it's like fishing. You, you throw that line out, see what catch. So it's been good for us uh, lately. So it's been pretty good. Um, all right, I'm going to kind of get to what I, I'm doing. Um, I, I played around with some things last night, trying to simplify what I do so you can see in the visual. Um, this is an example of something that this is like the first stage. And, you know, they say painting blocks and, and shapes. I sometimes never get to that because, you know, I, 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 I sometimes go away from that. I get into certain areas and I get into a little detail. Now this, I just wanted to show generally the eyes and some other uh, blocking in of colors that I did here. All right, so that's just to get an understanding of, of where I am with that. Now, yes, what's that? Yeah, that's yeah, and, and that happens all the time. See, that's why you know people say it's 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 cheating, but it's not paint by numbers. I've got to understand certain areas, uh, certain um, um, uh, anatomical things to it. So. So with, with, say, for instance, a portrait, you have to understand or have a good sense of anatomy. Uh, so when I do that, I do lose some information, um, but I continue on because I understand what I'm doing. All right? So um, now my medium, I use, I use Gamsol, a paint thinner. What I do, I expedite my drying time because though I talk a la prima and, and paint wet on wet, I sometimes like to have my paints dry faster so that I can get, continue working rather than waiting days or weeks. I mean, there's other things that you can use. Uh, um, uh, there's all kinds of products to accelerate your drying time and not mess, mess yourself up. But I put a few drops of, of cobalt dryer in this and that expedites drying time. Um, okay, and I do premix and I use tubes and I fill them in here. Say for instance, 
there are certain uh, transitional colors, uh, certain gray, uh, greens, or even grays, uh, like the three value grays that usually generally I, I, I make my, my grays, is usually a number three gray according to this, uh, number five gray, and number seven. I try not to get past seven because then you know it's too dark. Okay, um, oh, and one, one other thing, you know, everyone loves Bob Ross, <laughs> and, and he's, he's always doing stuff with this, all right? In my experimentation, you know, this is a liquid first coat. It's a clear coat, and uh, you can't put it on too thick, um, but you thin it out enough, and it kind of helps you really gloss over things. Say, for instance, if you have something painted, you can put this liquid clear on it, you can use linseed oil too, but for some reason I love using this, and sometimes too I put I mix this into my medium, and it actually uh, helps with uh, uh, the smooth layering of colors um, and uh, and the, and the drying time. My boss has said it's time to get down to business. Um, you know the funny thing is everyone talks about. Flesh tones. How do you, how you how do you mix flesh tones? Well, quite honestly, I mix flesh tones with the the yellow and, and red and and little uh, burnt umber or anything like that. But quite honestly, when it comes down to it, I simplify life and I buy the flesh tones. <laughs> I buy flesh color. It's the same thing. I've done it over and over for years. I've been mixing flesh. And I found that, you know, it's just so much bug, the cadmium red light. With, and, and the bottom line is, this simplifies my life. So I do that. Now, I, I do say I pre-mix my, my colors. And of course, I, I look at the, the object and the light's so bad. Sometimes, you know, I, use, I have a set lighting in my studio space. And I pretty much bought everything out here except for my lights. Uh, so my colors are so certainly off. But I premix judging from what I have. Like I said, I take the middle value of things. And I'm looking, and I'm trying to see this. <laughs> and uh, what I do is, you know, I, I lessen, uh, I tint it down. Or I should say, you know, one of the important things about painting, and most of you know that, is the, the value, hue, and chroma. Those are the three things that are very important in painting. All right. Um, this, um, I'm trying to mix the the uh the middle tone all right and that's going to be where i branch off from so from the middle tone i i work on on uh a like i said a dark and a lighter one and uh then i can start working from that so oh, i'm just going to start going here because my my boss says hey let's let's stop the talking and get to working <laughs> all right now the problem is that it's very bright the the chroma the strength of the color is very strong in this so what i do um i i i, I tone it down and so i take a little um i can use uh, the uh, uh, burnt umber all right and i can i can put it into the mix and take it down a notch I can also use um, ultramarine blue to kill the color a little bit as well. There's ultramarine, you have a cerulean blue. I mean, so many other ways that to, to take down the color. Basically, that's one of the formulas anyway when you mix flesh. But, you know, from the tube, it's not as strong as I wanted. So I'm trying to match the colors, and wow, from here, it's because of the lighting and everything else. It's very blue. I don't want to do that, so I have to do a little guesswork and stay away from making it very blue. All right, so I mix enough portion of it so that um, I can now do a little darker. Oh, incidentally, sometimes cheap colors really help. Uh, right here, this is from, uh, from Hobby Lobby, this color here. It's brown gray, all right? This brown gray saves me a lot of time. What I generally like to do, and you can make this this color, by the way, with with uh, with the the flesh tones from the tube, and adding a little bit of ivy black in it, and you can get this. But so that it saves time. <laughs> so with that, you know, it also helps reduce the chroma of what I'm trying to do. All right. So like I said, I'm gonna try to mix some uh, some darker um, um, values on this. So just. And it takes a little work to get it going, 
Sometimes as you make it darker, you kind of kill the strength of the color, but you want the value low. So I just dab from somewhere else, all right? Uh, I, I like to use a Venetian red or, or um, I forgot, the, the, the earth red or something of the sort, but I use a Venetian red. It's uh, another brand name. <clears throat> it's uh, oxide, chromium oxide red, I believe. And it helps um, get back the chroma. So sometimes when you, you reduce the, the, the uh, when you mix the value, you sometimes lose a little bit of, of the chroma. So I do that, and where's my rag? And then I want to get lighter, so naturally it's adding white as a tint to, to get it lighter. Um, white sometimes, it just dulls it as well. So oh, that's where Naples yellow comes into play. Very important. So I put that in there to help it out a little bit. All right. So what I decided to do, I had these samples here, but I wanted to uh, basically show you how it worked with the drawing. But I'm going to work on just certain parts of this, and I'm going to jump around because right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to um, wrap my head around the piece. It takes a while to get into your piece sometimes, so, so you have to play around with it. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working with the eyes, although I mix these, these values. Um, I'm going to start working with the eyes. And, um, um, I jump around. I don't know if any of you have a, a, a major way of working constantly the same, especially at the very beginning of anything. Hey, Amen. So um, I'm going to take, and I didn't talk about my palette, but that's, a, that's irrelevant right now. I'm going to move on to Van Dyke Brown, all right? And I'm going to start with this side of the, the, this eye first, all right? And uh, usually I like to work from this way to that way, but in this instance, I'm going to work on this one. So I'm going to try to render the eyes a little bit so that at least you can get an idea of what it takes me. Now with the cobalt dryer um, that I use, um, it really helps in expedient. It, it accelerates the drying time to such a degree that once I get back to this, say if I move elsewhere, I get back to this, um, it's pretty much dry already, and I can work on top of it. It's a fantastic situation for me. All right. Now, as far as the eyes, of course, they're lids, so they close, they open and close. So I have to keep that in mind. So what I'm doing is I'm just. Um, I'm going to try to um, get that whole thing going. So, of course, working from dark to light as, as uh, in oil, that's basically part of the Bible, <laughs> painting with oil, working from dark to light. There are instances where you don't have to, <laughs> but that's supposed to be how you're supposed to handle it. Now the eyelids, they're, they're flaps for the most part. <laughs> they open and close, and of course, they're three-dimensional, so um, they have a certain way of looking. All right, so I'm trying to do that now. Usually the, the red and the, the lid at the bottom is usually the lightest. So I'm just basically indicating stuff right now so that when I get back to it, it's an easy flow. So, and sometimes you gotta paint what you know and not, not what you see sometimes. And as it comes, as you go on, it get, comes together. I, I mix my, uh, my uh, uh, um, cl Clara, um, the whites of the eyes, I, I used uh, uh, ultramarine blue, white, um, a little bit of the flesh tones to give it some sort of uh, 
life. And I'm looking at these, they're very blue. Of course, this is a doctored photo a little bit. So when you work from doctored photos, you have to be understanding that there's some, some things that you might have to augment. Um, one to a smaller brush. It's funny, when, when, actually when I work, I work like this. I've got a whole bunch of brushes in my hand to the size that I, that I generally need. And so I switch around. So once I get tired of one brush, I'm going to go on to the next. Um, so that's good. Okay. No, I, I primarily work with flats, with, with brights. I don't, I don't like flats because for some reason there's less control for me. So I, I like using... Um, the brights. I use brights. Um, I very seldom use filberts um, because I don't like the control I have with it. Everyone has a special thing that they like doing. I'm trying to work so that everyone can see. <laughs> um, Iris. I'm seeing her eyes kind of very brown. Um, in my haste, I forgot to put my sienna, sienna brown in there. My burnt sienna. Forgot to put that in. That's all right. Now, people stylize the eyes. I kind of try to paint what I see with when it comes to that. So... Um, the three-dimensional aspect, what I, I like to do, and I'm just indicating um, the highlighted area, all right, so I'll do that with, with a uh, lighter blue, because it all depends on the light that's shining, actually, but I, I, I tend to believe that when, when you look at the, the blue and the little highlight in the eye, it's not just white, it's kind of blends with other colors, so, and it kind of softens the impact. So I'll put that there for now. And uh, I'm gonna work on the rest of the lid of the eye using, using my, uh, my flesh, the rest of the flesh, and I'm gonna stick with, with the middle tone for now. And seeing how the light is actually coming from this direction in the, the picture, it's coming from this direction, I have to also keep that in mind, especially when I lay down the, uh, the flesh, the, the, the top lid. And these days, if, you know, the, the whole makeup thing, it's kind of difficult to, to make some judgments. But, you know, I do, do the best I can. All right. I'm, I'm also going to indicate the uh, the underlid, the lid at the bottom, and and this is the uh, the middle tone that I'm using. All right, to get that whole thing going, of course, the fleshy part, the eyelid. Um, I'm putting that down as well, but I'm also going to uh, work on. Oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> it happens all the time, especially when I'm on a rush. I'm meet, trying to meet some deadlines, and uh, my things fall all the way. I see a little purple in there, so, um, and that's what I'm saying. I I paint sort of, kind of in a frenzy, and uh, I don't necessarily use um, the the um, the scale of gray, um, or at least the value that I see, um, it, it, as far as with the chroma, kind of expediting, I mean, um, expediting my process here. 
And for the sake of a demonstration, I'll make this a little <laughs> to indicate that this is where the light's coming from. Also, the bottom lid. Uh, all right, that's that's important. Um, the side of the eye, um, where the ridge of the nose is starting, I'm going to indicate that too, just to give a little presence of something happening because you know people want action. <laughs> it take it too long to get to the, the to the serious content. So using being that it's it's sort of reddish brown. Um, I use my uh, alizarin crimson and um, ultramarine with a dab of, of green to uh, to kill the color a little bit. All right, it take down the value and and also to kill the color. All right, now this is too dark, and of course you just make the adjustments. So you dabble into the uh, into the reserve number, uh, uh, the uh, the third, the dark. Let's bring this in. What's that? Uh, well, what green? What green does? Green kind of uh, takes down the chroma, um, especially what, when we're talking about flesh tones. We're talking about orange green. These, these are complementary colors, and complementary kind of takes away or lessens the the chroma of of the primary. So you know, uh, I, I use these. Uh, understanding of color as I w have gone along all these years to, to help me understand what I'm painting. So I'm just going to do that, kind of get on on the, uh, the side of the eyelids here, the bottom lid. And as I go along, I can even delve into the side. Now this is red. It's a lot of red on here, so of course red reflects um, from the clothing onto the flesh. And I see some purples there too. <laughs> so just get into that. And uh, man, I hate when my nerves are wrecked. <laughs> Don't y'all? Yeah. You know, like I said, it's been a long time. So, <laughs> so <laughs> under pressure. <laughs> Uh, and and plus I, I really can't see that that well, so I'm just trying to uh, to cope with what I have. You know, it's like like I'm a, um, I'm a football team that's playing on, not on my field, <laughs> so it, it's really hard to try to work things out. All right. Um, it's it's starting to come together. Because when I when I really get into it, I get into the reflections, I get into the wetness, I try to create wetness to the eyes to, to make it jump out at you. The the task of any realist in my particular genre, uh, my main task is is to kind of recreate life. You know, you have photography. Photography is fine, but you know, it's not done by a human mind, <laughs> and that's that's the difference to me. <laughs> So um, now certain areas that's probably going to be reflective is under here. And when I do all of this, I go back to in the second stage and I really get into solidifying stuff as I go along. Uh, there's, there's, there's all kinds of, uh, in three dimensionals, you, you have light that's cascading on certain sides of things. And what you're trying to do is you, you're trying to sculpt or, or, or turn the light so that you can understand from like the dark how, how it revolves over around an object. So, so that's my main purpose as I go along. Um, I'm gonna try to fill in a little bit more information so that it's easy for you all to take in because this is only uh, about a 30, 30 minute paint session. And if my wife had it her way, I'd be painting the whole entire time and not talking. Girl, let's work. Less words, more talk. Uh, less words and and more uh, more work. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> now I'm making fun of her because you know she really keeps me in check, though she really does, and I'm very happy that uh, um, we've been together for 30 years, so over 30 years, 
the dating <laughs> yeah all, all the re the uh, the red reflections as I'm trying to to demonstrate all of this reflected light and color so just working on one half uh, later on I'm, I'm gonna get to the finish of this piece but I'm just trying to make it so that you can understand where I'm coming from and see how I work at home. Now I see the whole face, and which is which is good. Now this side, this side of a face, is is a lot lighter. So what I can do to help, what I, one thing I hate when I'm painting, uh, I try to, like I said, the whole my whole stage is try to eradicate all of the white that plays with my eyes. All right. So I'm gonna get into that a little bit. I'm gonna use the uh, the middle tone here that I drew up and kind of try to tone things down a little bit so I could see more of what I'm doing. Um, eyes in color always plays tricks. So sometimes, too, I just cover the whole thing, which works as well. But just trying to give you a demonstration of color and how I go about things. Their eyes are amazing. It's very piercing. <laughs> so far. <laughs> <laughs> that's it it's dimensional the funny thing is it's just not even it's not even done yet <laughs> so thank you I'll work a little a larger brush more coverage on that side all these new brushes I, I use I use um, um, what you, Hobby Lobby's brushes because I it, because it's close by so it's an easy shop it, rather than waiting on things to come from Dick Blick or whatever, uh, I do that every few months and get all my stuff delivered. But sometimes if you're in a rush, you need to do something. And I know there are things about Hobby Lobby, but the bottom line is, it's, you know, uh, my philosophy is not going to get in the way of tr me trying to make some cash. So, <laughs> so um, I, I do the Hobby Lobby and their synthetic uh, brushes, their their synthetic uh, uh, hog hair brushes. It's it's good for. The first few stages of painting, so I, I do shop there. I go to I go to Michaels, and they're, they're, they're atrocious, especially you know they don't have what what I need. So uh, I'm just trying to spread um, a little bit more information. Still not broken in yet. Because with all this blue light and all this light coming in from the window and everything else, it's really killing, killing my visuals. So that kind of helps with that side of the face. You know, as a matter of fact, I'll get into uh, what I perceive as some of the darkest darks on this side. So yeah, I'm I'm sticking with my lines. Of course, as as Doreen noticed, I lose a lot, but that's okay because um, I I know what I I I see and I, I judge my judgment as far as getting getting uh, my information correct. So I'm gonna go back to um, To uh, putting down the uh, my middle tones to a point. Now, getting into my colors, uh, my palette. Um, I use a standard uh, portrait palette, um, with some exceptions. I go crazy because you know the 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 gym zone, the zone method where you use either your your, your primary colors then your white and 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 your uh, and your your black. I don't use that. I, I use there's so many colors out there. Why am I gonna recreate something that's already there? <laughs> so I I buy tubes of paint and I just I, I I experiment and they tend to work, especially if it's for a certain object that's a certain color. You know, because by the time you get into it, if you really got crazy about your colors, all right, you're going to say, I don't want to contaminate the, uh, my color with a brush. 
So you'll switch a blush to use the same brush with the same color. You know, it just gets too much. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that this is that's how I operate. It's like, hey, um, why waste my time when something already exists? Now, people like Max Ginsburg, he actually, you know, he does definitely stick to his colors. He likes, he gets off on creating his own uh, colors from scratch, and it's all fine and good. The Jim Zone, the Zone method, and all that. Um, as you you keep painting, you start to get into your own. Um, way of doing things and you start learning, leaving things that you picked up along the way and you get comfortable with what you do. All right, so it's not a bad thing at all. I'm gonna put in her lips because it's ruby red. It's been, it's, it's baiting me right now. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, I'm gonna put that in. Um, so I'm taking a little bit, I have, I have a cadmium red uh, deep hair and of course, um, it, it, the brand that I use, it's, it's sometimes important because when you get the top brands, the pigments are nice and strong and the tinting power, it really helps with your, 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 your paints. But you know, if you can't afford you know, cadmium red from Harding or whatever, you buy the next best thing. This is actually, this is a hue. This is a cadmium red uh, hue. Um, so I, I, I'm gonna use it. Now I'm gonna put a little, the, the lips as I noticed, it has a little bluish in there. So I'm gonna take, take some permanent magenta. I'm gonna kill it a little bit or, or neutralize it a little bit uh, with some, some, uh, some white, titanium white. Um, now I, I did start talking about my palette. My palette, it's uh, from cool, it's from uh, warm to cool. So I start off with my whites, Naples yellow, my my reds and stuff like that, and then I get into. Uh, it's funny. I, I I like to I I change things around a little bit. I like my earth tones right in the middle of both of them. So, all right, there you go. That really helps. <laughs> and uh, one other thing I'm going to do is check my timing here. <laughs> Uh, wow, 45 minutes almost gone like that. <laughs> it's 144. Um, all right, so I'm going to start putting in some dark information. And then, like I said, I jump around. So it, it works for me that by the time I finish the stage, which is generally about three hours, um, I sit back, let it dry. This brush is too large for that. <laughs> Okay, here we are. Uh, so I put on, put in my docs so I can kind of understand more information. It's like trying to learn a different language, I suppose, right? Because as you go along, you know, you understand things better as you paint along, all right? Um, I'm gonna move on to the second eye because it's the whole Cyclops thing is not working either. <laughs> so, my glasses on. So get a, as we get older, we all know, man, you know, things, that, things we used to do. Um, Now, of course, the lid is just one of those things. I don't want to get too dark underneath the, the second lid, um, the second bottom lid. Uh, so I'm going to just indicate that there is a ridge here um, with, a, with a lesser value um, color. And I'm going to go a little red to try to indicate. Of course, I dabble a little bit with this to help the drying. I I paint in the top of of the lid with a red, and later on I'll blend it. But it's it's a softer, uh, lesser value color. All right. Now, 
funny I have my mall sticks here. I was going to demonstrate this with, with using this. You know, you, you make this your, yourself with the dowel and whatnot and rags. <laughs> so I do a lot of it. I have a huge one at home, but I, I'm going to just not use it because it's, it's cumbersome. <laughs> Now the challenge that I like sometimes, and it's kind of you know I like having those paint outs where where everyone is you know studio space, and that, that's something that I'd like to do with the art league too. Just just have a model and everyone have gather around and just paint, and, and in in the in the way that you're given like three hours to create something and come up with something that that seems like it's fun. So each each session. You're gonna finish one painting one way or another, <laughs> you know. All right, so of course uh, you try to make mix your colors so that they, especially with when it comes to eyes, there are some adjustments, but the eyes should match, right? <laughs> so you you try to put that in. And the nature of the eyes, they're like, you know, they're like a baseball or, or a, um, they're brown. yeah, you know, the, so, so the, the dimension of that, you kind of have to try to paint that in. And as far as eyes too, they're wet object, they, you know, they, they, it's moisture, it's moist. So you have to, uh, uh, when you paint eyes, you have to keep that in mind as well um, so having a little color underneath um, a little small highlighted lines and that, that comes down down the road but to, to show the moisture it's, it's it does become significant um, in creating the illusion of, of something wet uh, so still it's not going to dry fast enough for me in light of, you know, the amount of time uh, we have here. Um, but keeping in mind, um, using the Venetian red, And the reason why you have this line across here, there's always a shadow, a cast shadow from the eyelids, because if the light's coming from any direction, you have that cast shadow going in. So that's part of it. All right. So there's some blending going on with that, especially that um, the light falling from a certain area. So you want to indicate that. Uh, I have a habit of watching television. When I watch television, uh, I, I look at eyes and I look at all of the, the highlights in the eyes to see where the lights are coming from. Sometimes the two light source, you can see that and you picture that. And of course, all of the highlights in the face when you look at a picture, you can see whether what light's stronger than the other, what's the, what's the main light, um, and what's the lesser light. And then also you look for uh, areas where there's crescent light, and it's really cool. I, I do that a lot whenever I watch television. As a matter of fact, I love movies and things like that because you see the color schemes in the movies, and it's just that you see how colors work together. So all of that, CSI Miami, to me, that's like, that's like the best show for color. And I watch that show all of the time, and I'm just fascinated how they make all these lights, all the colors work. <laughs> All right, so, so 
I'm going to move on to another part. I think we're running out of time to go next door. Um, I'm going to move on to one area, too, that's very important, like the, the, the nape of the, the lips on the, the corners. They're like, there's a little dimple that goes here. And it all depends on, on how uh, the lip is, is shaped. But I love the transition that happens with the lips. It goes in on the corners and so forth. And trying to, to, to create that when I paint, that's one of the, the fun, fun things in life for me, <laughs> really. So I'm just going to um, paint a little bit of this in there. Um, of course, the three-dimensional areas of that, um, there's certain areas that go that actually goes a little deeper um, than other areas, and generally it's where um, you have more space in between uh, the lip uh, ridges. Mm. Yeah, I go through these decision makings all the time. <laughs> what brush should I use? Uh, all right, so it's very red, so. I'm gonna to create the illusion. Um, sometimes too, you can just dabble with the red and go in there and blend it. And right away, you start to see things happen with that. If I was to go even wider, you'll see. And these aren't highlights. I'm probably going to blend this later. So I'm just going to put where I see a transition in the lip um, between the top and the bottom. And of course, generally, there's a different chroma, chromatic change uh, that happens at the, on, on, at the bottom lip than the top lip, uh, the top of the, the, of the bottom lip. So. You know, it all depends on how light, uh, light fall on it. And usually there's a reflection at the bottom, the top ridge of the bottom lip that's generally here. Um, that also helps. But as you blend, things come together. Now, of course, the, co the corners are also going to have some sort of a transitional situation going on uh, there that kind of dictates... Uh, the, uh, the panting of the lips, all right, I'll work on, on, on the bottom. Just trying to work quickly to, to actually give you an idea of how I work. So, so that's really in a nutshell. Uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, it's a fun name that they, they like to, to call it the, um, the uh, the uh, crimson line or, or so, <laughs> the vermilion line, and I get into all of these these names that they call these parts of the of the lip, and the facial anatomy. Um, I'll go lighter. I'll I'll make this blue, because the transition of blue, adding a cool to, adding a cool to a warm kind of creates uh, a lot of interesting things happening. So the vermilion uh, border, um, I'm just going to uh, kind of indicate some stuff with that. And usually the, the corners of the lips here, the, like I said, it curves in. So I kind of, it's usually a little lighter um, with less chroma, um, less information. Uh, this particular one, um, the, the ridge is right there, so. And, and her pouting, if you, if you look at the picture, this area here, anatomically, these, these are a group of muscles that, that's here, and you can basically see them. So that you can see them with their they're kind of with the the, uh, the highlights that's that's surrounding it. It kind of shows you how how it's laid out, and not to mention too. And the other thing I should have pointed out was also um, she's kind of 
has a face down a little bit like this. And so the light is actually a little different. And the anatomical features of her face is different, too. She's got less of a, a, a chin and more of a nose, a longer nose. So seeing that in the process kind of gives you an idea of what's what. Now, these are areas that I love to work. All right, the flesh tones and everything else, trying to create the depth of the face and, and, and the fleshiness of the, I should say, fleshiness of the face. It's all f a lot of fun for me, but generally, I like working um, to create the, um, the illusion of depth in, in, in these areas. Now, lately, I've been fascinated with the ridges of the, of the lips, the way that all of these uh, these things here happen. <laughs> and people stylize this a lot. Um, and I, I, I generally stay away from stylizing because I try to be as close to the pictures I possibly can. Um, but I do also understand, and I say this all the time, uh, cameras lie, pictures lie, so you have to figure out where the lie is and you have to make those corrections. I told that to a photographer once mm -hmm. and he, called, he pulled me in a room and said, no, nah, you're wrong. So he starts showing me pictures that he's taken where the camera, it, it, the, the uh, the information in the camera is exactly perfect. And I'm like, well, you know, it's a machine. And what you're doing is you're manipulating that. And, and so in essence, you figured out how to tell a better lie. <laughs> you know? So we go through that a lot. Now, wow, I'm looking at this, and she's tilted. <laughs> the funny, funny story is, and I didn't know this about myself for a long time, what I used to do is like when I painted, I worked with the inferior lights. And it made all my work dark. And I had to figure out wh what's causing this. And making an, al an analysis of, of your, your work, you have to say, you know, there's something wrong. So I take it to, I take it to the mirror. Well, I, I realize it's the light. But then the other thing I realized is that I took it to the mirror to see exactly what's going on. And I saw all of my imagery going slanted down. So I favored this side of, of my work. And, and so I had to make those corrections. So I keep that in mind whenever I paint to, to try to understand my defaults and how to correct it. So, so I guess you can call that, uh, you know, I, I used to coach football and, and all the self-corrected methods that we do, you know, uh, especially throwing the football or whatever, <laughs> that's part of it. So it's like, you, as artists, we do have to do some self-corrective methods to, to make sure that our work is on point.